Uh, good evening. Thank you for being with me again uh, as we continue uh, studying uh, Revelation. Uh, last Sunday, we did the first 12 verses of chapter 18. Tonight, we are going to uh, start in verse 13 and go to the end of the chapter. So let's just jump right in there and begin with verse 13 tonight. Cargoes of cinnamon and spice, of incense, myrrh and frankincense, of wine and olive oil, of fine flour and wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and carriages, and human beings sold as slaves. They will say, the fruit you long for is gone from you. All your luxury and splendor have vanished, never to be recovered. The merchants who sold these things and gained their wealth from her will stand far off, terrified at her torment. They will weep and mourn and cry out, Woe, woe to you, great city, dressed in fine linen, purple and scarlet, and glittering with gold, precious stones and pearls. In one hour, such great wealth has been brought to ruin. Every sea captain and all who travel by ship the sailors and all who earn their living from the sea will stand far off. When they see the smoke of her burning, they will exclaim, Was there ever a city like this great city? They will throw dust on their heads and with weeping and mourning cry out, Woe, woe to you, great city, where all who had ships on the sea became rich through her wealth. In one hour, she had been brought to ruin. Rejoice over her, you heavens, Rejoice, you people of God. Rejoice, apostles and prophets, for God has judged her with the judgment she imposed on you. Then a mighty angel picked up a boulder the size of a large millstone and threw it into the sea and said, With such violence, the great city of Babylon will be thrown down, never to be found again. The music of harpists and musicians, pipers and trumpeters, will never be heard in you again. No worker of any trade will ever be found in you again. The sound of a millstone will never be heard in you again. The light of a lamp will never shine in you again. The voice of bridegroom and bride will never be heard in you again. Your merchants were the world's important people. By your magic spell, all the nations were led astray. In her was found the blood of prophets and of God's holy people, of all who have been slaughtered on the earth. Let us pray. Father, thank you for chapter 18 of Revelation. We thank you so much, Lord, for your word that teaches, gives comfort. And Lord, this night, may you grant us your wisdom from above that we will gain greater understanding of what we're studying this night. Bless every person who's taking part in this study. That, that we will learn more and draw closer and closer to you. Thank you, Lord, for your, this opportunity to study your word together. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. All right, we're going to start in verse 13 tonight. Large corporations will sell anything for a profit. Businessmen crying because they have lost sales. Slavery in the modern world, which is unthinkable. Human life will be cheap. People sold as merchandise. Dehumanize mankind as any system without God will do. In verse 14, global traders, the Babylonian dream has been destroyed. All her riches and glory will be gone forever to be no more. Heaven is home. Here, heaven is here announcing that her playhouse is wrecked forever and she is down never to rise again. Fools of this world are found daily in every marketplace and place of business. And you can read about that in Luke chapter 12, verses 13 to 21. Babylon has always been associated with wealth. They're called the kingdom of gold in Daniel chapter 2. The famous gardens, the hanging gardens of Babylon, are one of the seven wonders of the world. In verse 15, businessmen who prospered with deals with Babylon will not go near the burned out ruins. They will cry. 
They will grieve at a distance, terrified at her judgment, weeping and wailing. In verse 16, many will also cry because Babylon's beauty and wealth will fail to protect her. God decided it would fall and it will. No pride left in any man. Everything they have will be lost. Panic will be 100 times greater than that which followed the U.S. stock market crash of 1929. Jesus said uh, this in Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. The only permanent investments are spiritual investments. Giving to the Lord's work is truly sound financial planning because it becomes legal tender in heaven. In verse 17, the sudden destruction of such great wealth in a short time will be catastrophic for multitudes of people. Kings, dictators, politicians, global merchants, businessmen, they will cry and they will wail. Seamen who transport her goods will cry because it's big business. All who will be earning a living on the sea will stand back and mourn the loss of goods and jobs and business. You know, how would we feel if the luxuries in our lives, which we have come to consider necessities, suddenly went up in smoke? You know, we live in a global economy. Almost no such thing as an American product anymore. In verse 18 of chapter 18, this cry is similar to, to the lament people heard when the beautiful city of Tyre was destroyed for a second time. And, and I want to share that with you in Ezekiel 27, 32. As they wail and mourn over you, they will take up a lament concerning you. Who has ever silenced like Tyre, surrounded by the sea? When people see the smoke of Babylon rising in the air, they will ask, was there ever a city like this great city? Revelation uh, eighteen nineteen. The third time we are told Babylon will fall in one hour. And I want to share with you Revelation eighteen ten and eighteen seventeen. It talks about one hour. Terrified at her torment, they will stand far off and cry, "Woe, woe to you, great city!" You mighty city of Babylon, in one hour your doom has come. And then in verse 17, it says, In one hour such great wealth has been brought to ruin, every sea captain and all who travel by ship. Sudden nature of her destruction will leave the political, business, and shipping world bitterly weeping, reeling, and stunned. Clearly a sign of what the love of money will do to people. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people, eager for money, have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. When money is God and God is gone, what is left but godless grief? The destruction of this great city in just one hour could mean an atomic or nuclear explosion, possibly. The fact that people will not go near it is another indication of that. In verse 20, this is something the Old Testament prophets prophesied. Let's take a look at Isaiah chapter 13, 19 to 22. Babylon, the jewel of kingdoms, the pride and glory of the Babylonians, will be overthrown by God like Sodom and Gomorrah. She will never be inhabited or lived in through all generations. There no nomads will pitch their tents. There no shepherds will rest their flocks. But desert creatures will lie there. Jackals will fill her houses. There the owls will dwell. And there the wild goats will leap about. Hyenas will inhabit her strongholds. 
jackals, her luxurious palaces. Her time is at hand, and her days will not be prolonged. Also, it's uh, in, prophesied about in Jeremiah chapter 50, verses 38 to 40. A drought on her waters, they will dry up, for it is a land of idols, idols that will go mad with terror. So desert creatures and hyenas will live there, and there the owl will dwell. It will never again be inhabited or lived in from generation to generation. As I overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, along with her neighboring towns, declares the Lord, so no one will live there, no people will dwell in it. The New Testament apostles predicted this. Uh, I want to share with you in James chapter 5, verses 1 to 6. Now listen, you rich people, weep and wail because of the misery that is coming on you. Your wealth has rotted and moss have eaten your clothes. Your gold and silver are corroded. Their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. You have hoarded wealth in the last days. Look, the wages you failed to pay the workers who mowed your fields are crying out against you. The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. You have lived on earth in luxury and self-indulgence. You have fattened yourselves in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the innocent one who was not opposing you. The tribulation period saints will pray for. You know, and we should join the angels in heaven in rejoicing when God's word is fulfilled and the prayers of God's people are answered. Here we have a difference between God's people and the godless. God's people will rejoice and sing the praises of God. The godless will grieve and mourn the loss of their God, money. In the end, Babylon will have brought his judgment on herself for mistreating God's people. In verse 21, an angel will throw a huge stone violently down into the sea, and it will disappear forever. This symbolizes the sudden, violent, and eternal destruction of future Babylon. It will be wiped off the face of the earth with one fatal blow from the hand of the Almighty God. In verse 22, everything will cease to be in Babylon. No more music, no people going to work, no craftsmen on the job. She will be silenced forever. Verse 23, the lights will all be dark. Joyous occasions will never be heard again. Babylon will be on an utter, will be an utter waste. The forces of darkness, black magic, sorcery, and demonic practices will reign until God turns their lights off. Our modern world has seen an increase in astrology, magic, fortune telling, and occult. In the final verse for tonight, Babylon has a long history as the city of Satan. The false prophet who is a fake in lamb's clothing, will make his headquarters there during the last half of the tribulation period. He will worship the Antichrist. No tolerance for God's people. It will kill all those who lack the mark of the beast. Babylon's destruction will be well deserved. Jesus warned that false prophets will deceive many in the last days. I want to share with you one final scripture tonight, Matthew 24, 11, and many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. The winds of deceit will reach gale force during the tribulation period. Beware of any religious leader who speaks ill of Jesus and opposes the scriptures. Any message that contradicts the Bible, no matter how sweet sounding, is not from God. That's the end of chapter 18. Uh, I want to thank you for joining me tonight. Uh, I encourage you to read chapter 18 if you haven't done so. And go ahead and read ahead to chapter 19. Come back and be with me next Sunday night as we go into chapter 19, which is actually the last chapter of part two of Revelation. Once we get through chapter 19, we'll be down to chapters 20, 21, and 22, which is the thousand-year reign of Jesus. So thank you for taking part in this study, and I'll see you once again next Sunday.